Good day, friends. This is Tracy Brown, your somatic nutrition therapist and attuned eating expert. And I want to do an example for you and with you about how to work with your experiences of discomfort and not get back in the looping of labeling it as I'm doing something wrong. Um, what's wrong with me? Why isn't this working? And I'll tell you why things feel like, like, like we're doing something wrong. So when we change any behavior, our brain likes to do what it's used to doing, even if it's not good for us. It's just kind of how um, the brain works. Like we can know in our values, in our cognitive prefrontal cortex here, it's like, oh, it's a good idea to probably eat in the first half of the day. So I don't get too hungry. So I have more agency to make a potential for a bigger array of choices with my eating. But... Maybe you've been on a diet since you were 10 years old and you were taught in those dieting days that like eating as little as you can for as long as you can is a really great idea. It makes you stronger. It enables you maybe to possibly lose some weight that day, you know, and, and it be, that becomes like the value system. That becomes what you try to do. And so you get, and then you do other behaviors to try to numb out the hunger that you have to experience all day. And then you do your best to stay on plan the rest of the day. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you know, you always use the mornings and the next day as a way to fix what didn't go right on the diet the day before. So you come to non-diet videos like this and you're, and you, you're already getting the drift. Like, Oh, if I don't want to feel so out of control the second half of the day, if I don't want to feel like I'm binge eating or I don't want to feel like I'm out of control or it's emotional eating or whatever your mind is labeling it, whatever the context is. What I find in probably 90 something percent of my clients is that if they're feeling like there's a certain food they can't get off their mind or they're having a hard time eating an amount of food that feels physically comfortable in the second half of the day, especially in the evening or after work, after school, I look at their food and it's almost always there's deprivation of some kind, either caloric deprivation, um, choice deprivation, care deprivation, fun deprivation. There's always something. Sometimes, you know, a lot of those intersecting. So obviously a solution and an intervention to not have that experience continuously happen is to do something different. And you know the, what's coming, right? The suggestion is going to be that we need to start eating more in the first half of the day. And that's going to sound really great. It's like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. That's right. But where the rubber meets the road is when you start to do it. So let's say that you haven't eaten before noon in who knows how many years and, or um, whatever it is. And we, you decide to like, maybe you do it with me or you just make a decision on your own. You know, I'm going to start eating by 10 AM. But then you go to do the, the first day sounds great. You go to do it and you do it and maybe it's not so hard and it takes you a little bit of willpower to get there, but it's okay. Then the second and the third and the sixth day rolls around and you're starting to feel inside like you're, like you're vibrating, your head is screaming. If you keep this up, you know, you're going to gain weight. You're going to like never stop eating. You're never going to stop gaining weight. And that's the part right there that has the programming around diet culture and doing what you're doing is going to feel like a threat. And here's why, because you have all this attachment wounding and you're going to have all this, um, how am I going to belong? You're going to bump up against all the issues that made you go to start dieting in the first place. Right. And feeling all those old feelings from when you were 10 or 16 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, all those wounds, all those rejections, all those fear of other people, all those fears of getting health issues are going to come to the surface when you stop doing the thing that maybe keeps you in, in disordered eating, um, but the feelings feel like a threat. And I want to remind you all today, this is why I talk, talk so much about sensory work and polyvagal based, you know, nutrition counseling is that we have to be able to get grounded in now time, get anchored in now time, to orient to what is safe enough so that we can be a compassionate witness to those thoughts in our head and look at those sensations as not as threats, but as unprocessed experiences of too much or not enough. 
And when I say too much or not enough, I really do mean, um, wow, too much feelings of like, if I don't do it the way the culture tells me to do it, or my doctor or my mom or whoever, I'm not going to belong with them. I'm not going to be okay. And then not enough. It's like, wow, like nothing was here in these hard times for me when there was too much to have my back. And I don't really have a neural pathway or knowing how to have my own back. And so all of that's going to feel like too big, too much. And of course, we're going to run back to dieting. We're just going to want to, or we're not. And we're just maybe going to eat to try to settle all that overwhelm in the first place. So I hope this makes sense why we struggle so much. So a couple suggestions for you to like, well, okay, now what do I do? Um, everybody wants a solution and I don't blame you. I would and did too, is we've got to start working on getting in co-regulatory safe relationship and with our environment, with other people. Um, oftentimes we can't get through some of these relational ruptures all by yourself because food issues happen in relationship. So important. We got to continue to, that's number one. We got to, number two, continue to renew our minds around what is good and lovely and um, life affirming. We got to speak life. So every time you're trashing yourself, you got to rewind that and, and offer yourself some truth. It's, it's not true that like you're out of control, you're too much, that if you're fully authentically yourself with your hunger and fullness and just with who you are, with your personality and your yourself that everyone will reject you that's actually not true there are your there are people out there so just want to put that out there too that there's there's a way to get out of this and it is about risk taking but it's also about providing yourself with some means of which you can help yourself stay present and create a witness to at least when you're by yourself and you're not in a relationship with someone safe that you can say, Oh, there's that part of me that says X, Y, Z will happen if I don't diet or, um, if I don't exercise or whatever it is and provide that part of yourself, what you need, whatever kind of care or comfort, whatever it is, that's how we're going to get out of this day by day, meal by meal. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really would appreciate it if you shared your comments, your appreciation about this. If it strengthened you, then maybe it'll strengthen somebody else. So pass it along to your friends. And don't forget to catch like the, the summary of all this on this week's blog post as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.